Good evening to you all. Good evening, Mr. Mahmoud and Mr. Mahsan uh, Abu Shahri. Um, good evening to your audience again in a new webinar, which is titled about LinkedIn from employer point of view in RY, sorry, uh, and RYP, which is Rock Your Profile. I'm going to present the presenter to you, audience. Uh, Mr. Mahmoud Al Hadidi is a senior learning as and resourcing manager at Oman LNG. Mr. Mohsen Abu Shahri is a key accounting director, Gulf at LinkedIn. So we, our webinar will start with Mr. Mahmoud Al Hadidi. Mr. Mahmoud Al Hadidi, good evening to you all, and the mic is with you. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and good evening. Um, so today I'll be taking you through recruitment through LinkedIn and Oman LNG's experience. Um, LinkedIn is a, a, a platform which is, uh, especially for recruitment, is very, very well known. And this is why we, we've chosen this topic to present to you, especially those of you who are currently job seekers or the, or the who are studying as we speak. So a bit of a brief about myself. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Al Hadidi. So, and I've, I was on your seat sometimes in started my my uh, my undergraduate studies. So at that time, of course, uh, things were different compared to your time now, be it in terms of economical uh, situation or even be it from um, the ways that we were using to, to find jobs. You know, there were no platforms like LinkedIn and others. And this is why it, for, for, for us to present to you platforms that you need to, to know about. So my background, I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer by background. So my degree was in mechanical engineering. I've started my career um, as a mechanical engineering instructor in, in the Royal Guard of Oman Technical College. So I do feel for you. I've been interacting a lot with students uh, and I've been teaching students, in fact, for, uh, for eight years. After that, I've, uh, in fact, even while, 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 while teaching, I also did my MBA uh, and also starting uh, doing also internship, like you guys, you know, just to understand more about business administration. During that time, I felt human resources is key. So this is why I even changed career, if you see, from being a mechanical engineer to human resources. And in 2008, the opportunity came for me uh, to work for uh, a very well-known company, Oman LNG. Uh, and since then, I've been with them. I've started within training. I've moved from training to talent management, recruitment, and as you've heard, I'm currently uh, the senior manager for learning and resourcing for this organization. So uh, the agenda for, for my presentation, just I will give a, a bit of, um, I would like also to, to give you also what LNG stands for and what's my LNG supply chain so that you understand the business of, of this great organization. And also, why organizations need to have presence in social media, especially at this time? Why organizations need to have a LinkedIn account, to be more specific? So, a bit of an overview about Oman LNG. Overall capacity is 10.4 million ton per annum uh, in terms of production. We have, a, in terms of Omanization level, we are one of the highest. Uh, we have 87% uh, Omanization. And I would say it's not only a monetization by number, but even by quality. The management team uh, with, of the organizations, so we have the CEO and his reportees are all Omanis. We are the, sec the second largest contributor to Oman's uh, gross domestic product, GDP, after oil. Uh, we also dedicate 1.5% of our net, net income after tax uh, for social investment programs. And due to that, the company has funded more than 6,000 projects or initiatives across Oman. So we've been touching all governance in Oman with our CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility Program. So what is LNG? Uh, some of you might also wonder what's this LNG stand for? So LNG is liquefied natural gas where our, our, our role or our business mainly will, we get the gas and we liquefy it, and then we sell it to our customers. So we ship, we ship that gas to ships, we, it goes to our customers. 
in, in areas like South Korea and Japan. And some of you also wonder why we need to have all of those, uh, go through all of this hassle of liquefying the natural gas. When we just have a gas in its normal form and, and put it as a pipeline. So, so this is, can be an option, but can be a very expensive option. And in terms of change, it would be very difficult to change while liquefying the gas and shipping it uh, to any destination. So you can change the destination easily. So we liquefy the gas, first of all, for ease of shipment. Secondly, when you liquefy the gas, the force so it will use to buy one offer six six hundredths. So it, uh, it will be times it will be reduction. So it, normally the liquefaction happens at minus 160 degrees Celsius, and there you know the the volume of will be will be will be reduced dramatically by six hundred times, so that we can ship it to to our customers. Oman LNG value chain. Uh, so if you see Oman LNG, we, we get the, the gas from the upstream facilities, from the interior of Oman, about 350, 350 kilometers from our, from the field. The field is about 350 kilometers from our plant in Sur. Uh, and there we liquefy the gas, as, 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 as you've heard earlier, to at minus 160 degrees, where the gas will be turned to liquid. And then we will put it on the, on those ships where those ships will take them to to areas or to countries like Japan, while our main customer, Japan, and South Korea, there what happens, gasification plant where the, the gas from its liquid form, it will be regasified. It will change to be converted again to, to a gas form where it will be used mainly for, for uh, in power plants, in factories and other places. So why organization need to have a presence in social media? We talk about, uh, as I've said earlier, in, in, in 1998, things were different. You know, the main to find jobs was newspapers. Nowadays, it's different. Nowadays, you know, with you, this your generation, millennial, you are all different where in terms of where I mean the application that you are using, there is there is a lots of evolution in IT technology, and which helped a lot. So if you look at Generation X or Generation Y, we, I mean, you can see the cassette will be even different cassette. Yeah, so yeah, the cassette that we use to play in tape players, for example, you will see then there is for Generation Y there is what we call DVD, uh, which no more now uh, goes to movies and others. But now everything now, it's all available there in our websites. You can get all of those things, or even nowadays, Netflix, for example, to get, to get, um, to get movies. And also your presence. I think all of you now have presence in social media. I would be surprised if any of our millennials without a social media account. And this is what, for us, from recruitment point of view, it's really crucial for, to see uh, to have presence in the social media, the like of Facebook and Instagram, uh, Twitter, and of course, LinkedIn as well. So there we can find the talent. There we can interact with talent and get to know the talent more. So, so, so this is why every, I mean, each organization need to have that presence in social media and just to be specific within LinkedIn account. Why, why we in Oman Lanji have uh, decided that to have a LinkedIn account, because if you look at LinkedIn, we have access to more than 700 million professional members in LinkedIn. So at, at the press of a button, we'll be able for profiles, for talents across the globe. Only in Oman, I'll be able to get in Oman. Globally, in certain countries, in certain skill set, I'll be able to get that. And you're talking about 700 million and the, the number of of profiles growing by the second, I would say. So, so this is why we need to, this is one of the first reasons. The second, for those candidates who, who they are happy where they are working now, especially when I talk about experience higher here, who they are happy with their work. However, uh, they are good people. And for us, if they have profiles, we'll be able to, 
to tap their shoulders and ask them, hey, there is a job for you in Oman al Lanji. Why don't you apply? And we'll be able also to get in touch with them. So we having a, an account with LinkedIn and, and we are able even to send what's called emails. So through LinkedIn, we'll be able to, to contact each and every uh, profile within LinkedIn. LinkedIn is really user friendly and saves tremendous time in searching for candidates. So, so it's, it's, it's in terms of user experience, it's very good. Uh, you can easily get the profiles that you are looking for. And also you can tell of the message that you would like to, to target the candidates. So each candidate, yani we have different message that you would like to convey to them for them to apply to, to Oman al -Anji. And also creating dashboards to assess how engaged is the targeted candidates with Oman al brand. Because for us, to, it's very important if we want to be an employer of choice, we, it's very important to, to assess, engage how the, the, how the, the profiles within LinkedIn or the targeted candidates are engaging with us. And we have to keep them warm. If there is any questions opening, we will be always to, to we'll be able to reach out to them and ask them to, to apply for, for our jobs. So that's, that's uh, assessing the Oman LNG employer brand is really crucial. And also through LinkedIn, uh, and LinkedIn also have another tool called LinkedIn Talent Insights. We can analyze, analyze the job market and identify the needed skills for the future. So there's lots of, you know, there's with the fourth industrial revolution, there's lots of changes taking places and especially the skills. There's, when it comes to skills, there's the skill set required for the market. And for us as Oman LNG to be competitive in the market, especially in the talent market, we really need to understand what sort of talent is really emerging there and to make sure that we are abreast and we develop our people and also we look for people who have those skills. So, so these are the main reasons when it comes to, to Oman LNG, why it has the LinkedIn account, but also for you, if I may say, having that LinkedIn account is really important because you will be accessible. People will be, you will have visibility uh, with others. So all employers will be able to see you. This is one of the first places employers they go to, which is LinkedIn. So by having that profile, which uh, again later uh, Abdul Mohsin will be able to share with you uh, in terms of, uh, of the profiles and other things about LinkedIn. So having that LinkedIn profile, you have that visibility, not only the first job, but even afterwards, Yani, and it's not necessarily you'll be visible to Oman, but globally. You never know, you might have skill set that needed elsewhere. We do also get calls, for example, uh, from Oman and outside Oman because people, they have seen our LinkedIn account. So similarly to you, as a job seeker, it's very important to have that LinkedIn uh, profile where you will be visible to, to, to employers. So now I would I would like to leave you with uh, with uh, my brother I would say uh, Mr. Abdul Muhsin who will take you through the LinkedIn uh, and and uh, and following the the rock your LinkedIn profile which is an important uh, element as I said that you need to also to understand from LinkedIn point of view. Mr. Abdul Muhsin, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mahmoud. Uh, very, very elaborate and thorough explanation of uh, how uh, you know the HR landscape and the recruitment landscape operates in our modern era. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, so my name is Abdul Mahmoud um, Shadri. I work for LinkedIn. I've been with LinkedIn for the past two years. Um, similar to Mr. Mahmoud, I graduated from university um, as a software engineer so we're both we're both engineers and somehow life uh, pushed me towards the, uh, the hr space i have been in um, the hr software and hr uh, digital solution space for the past 10 years Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So prior uh, prior to uh, uh, LinkedIn, 
selling uh, and working with solutions, uh, HR software, uh, related to recruitment, related to uh, uh, performance management, learning, and, and, and all of that. And now I'm with LinkedIn. Sorry. Uh, apologies. I'm not sure. ممكن تحط لي ميوت؟ طيب شكرا. بليز. قاعد مستر محسن. It's okay. It's okay. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, so Mahmoud was talking about LinkedIn as as a go-to place for employers and employees that are looking to uh, recruit individuals. That is correct. So you need to you need to differentiate between the different types of candidates. So in the past, uh, there was always active candidates. Active candidates are people that are job seekers that go and search for jobs and apply for jobs, whether it's in the newspaper, whether it's online, um, or whatever uh, you know, whatever platform was available at the time. What LinkedIn has done as well, it's 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 facilitated the whole um, active candidates space where people go and apply for jobs, but also there's something called passive candidates. Uh, passive candidates are people that are not necessarily looking for jobs. However, because they have a presence um, where their skills and their experience is all made public, uh, people or recruiters or headhunters can get in touch with these individuals and offer them jobs, even if they're not looking for jobs. So, uh, you know, an example could be, you know, you're currently working for a company, you've been there for three years, um, you're happy, but uh, someone sees your profile, they like your experience, they get in touch with you private, offer you a better job. So this is another area where LinkedIn can help. Um, can you go, can you move to the next slide, please? So what will I be talking about today? I'll be talk, what, uh, I'll, I'll be covering the Rock Your LinkedIn profile uh, session or workshop, which will uh, which I will share best practices with you on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile to its maximum, uh, uh, you know, maximum capability, so that you can um, so you, you can be you can represent yourself uh, on LinkedIn and also so that recruiters can reach out to you in an easier way. Okay, next slide, please. So before, uh, before I get into the, the topics, I'd like to discuss vision at LinkedIn. Our vision is to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. So currently our estimates uh, say that there's about 3 billion um, people working in, in, in the workforce uh, around the world. Uh, Mr. Mahmoud mentioned earlier that we have 700 million members. Uh, those numbers are two months old. We currently have 25 million members on LinkedIn and we're, grow we're growing at a rate of two, mem two members per second. So uh, if I did this presentation next month, we'll probably be closer to 800 million. Uh, so we're growing very, very fast especially amongst university students. Uh, we've seen a very uh, high uptick in terms of university students subscribing and signing up to uh, LinkedIn. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so first thing I'm going to discuss is how to build your pro LinkedIn profile. Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. So uh, what's the difference between a LinkedIn profile and a resume or your CV? Um, you need to differentiate between the two. Your LinkedIn profile is not your CV, okay? Um, your CV speaks to or is tailored to a specific type of job or a specific uh, employer, whereas your LinkedIn profile, uh, it speaks to all potential uh, employers. So, you, you know, you need, to, you need to be a little bit more generic uh, in terms of on your LinkedIn profile. However, generic does not mean it's not detailed. Um, 
you still need to go into more detail, you, you know, with the LinkedIn profile, you go into details with the skills, with the projects you've worked on, your interests, the certifications, the education that you've done, um, and all of that. And since it's a social media platform, um, it allows employers and companies and professionals to communicate and collaborate and socialize uh, with each other and contact you directly. Uh, also, there's also recommendations on, on LinkedIn. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if, for example, you have a professor in university that, uh, you know, that you have a good relationship with, it's, it's always a good idea to ask him or her uh, to write a recommendation uh, for you. I'll get more into the recommendations later. Another thing about LinkedIn is it's very important for you to have a picture, okay? Um, the picture, you know, our, our data shows that members with uh, profile pictures receive up to 20 times, 21 times more views and nine times more connection requests than people that don't have pictures. Now, I understand that in our culture, uh, sometimes uh, people putting, posting pictures of themselves might not be uh, acceptable to them. That is fine. Uh, as long as you don't leave it blank. So for people that don't feel comfortable posting their own photos on LinkedIn, what I would recommend instead is for you to put a photo of your profession, something. So let's say, for example, um, uh, let's say, for example, you're a graphic designer. Uh, so you can put a, a, a photo of, of uh, Photoshop um, as your photo. Uh, as your as your pr profile picture, but some anything that is related to your uh, to your profession and to your jobs. However, if you do put a, your own picture, um, always make sure you use a background that is not dis distracting. So a plain uh, a plain bag. Um, sorry, uh, a plain background. Uh, you know, the, the your 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 face should be covering the majority of the uh, of the frame. Okay, always smile, have a friendly expression. Um, also, let the let, let let your picture represent what you do. What does that mean? So, if you're a lawyer, or you're a HR professional, or you're an accountant, uh, it's always a good idea to put to have your picture in in maybe in your Dishdasha, your suit, your abaya, something professional. However, if let's say, for example, you are an artist, okay, then it's acceptable for you to put a picture of yourself um, in, in a t-shirt uh, working on some art. Um, uh, a few months back, I was uh, working, uh, someone connected to me on LinkedIn who, who trains horses, and he had a picture of himself with, with a horse. Of course, that is acceptable because that is his line of work. Okay. Um, edit in terms of your profile. Your headline is very important. Your headline is what is immediately under your name. Uh, your headline is an opportunity to show what you are, not just what you do. Uh, of course, it's short, so it's sometimes it's the only thing people see when when they search. They see your picture and your headline. So make sure your headline is catchy. Uh, make sure it represents your your profession uh, and shows why you're unique. Uh, because it's the first thing the recruiter sees about you. If they like the headline, then they click on your profile and they get to see more information about you. Okay. Um, also in your profile at the very top, there is a summary. Um, I see that a lot of people leave this blank or they just put one or two sentences. Um, that is not best, best practice. Uh, what we rec recommend is two or three paragraphs, with the first paragraph being one or two sentences talking about who you are and what you do. Uh, the second paragraph being between three to five sentences that talks about your skills, your passion, your, your experience, and, and, and so on and so forth. And then finally, in the last paragraph, or two sentences about your future goals and um, you know your uh, ambitions. Um, also in the profile, make sure you always fill out all the fields in your profile. Do not leave anything blank. So 
your location is extremely, extremely important. And, you know, as Mr. Mahmoud uh, mentioned earlier, uh, saying that, you know, when they do their searches, they search first in Oman because Omanization is a top priority. If you do not have Oman as your location, there is no way for people like Mahmoud and his team to find you. The second most important thing uh, is your industry. So if you're an engineer or a, chemi or a chemical engineer, make sure you mention that, or computer scientists, make sure you mention that in your, uh, in your profile. Your education and certificates, your skills as well, but also with your skills, be careful. Do not put so many skills. Um, put up to maximum 20. I recommend 10 to 15. Uh, don't go over that because, uh, you know, it, it puts recruiters off when you put so many skills. Uh, put the main ones, the ones that you think are attractive, the ones that you think are important. Okay. Um, so about the, about the industry, um, when you add your industry to your profile, you have nine, you get nine times more profile views. Um, when you detail your work experience, you get five times more connection requests, eight times more profile views, and 10 times more messages from recruiters reaching out to you. Um, also under experience, you also have, uh, you can add rich media. Uh, you can add pictures or videos or, or articles of stuff you've done. Uh, so, for example, if you were interviewed by a newspaper, you can put a link in that section uh, as an example of the work you've done. Um, if you've if you've done a video of uh, some work that you've done, you can add it here. Um, this is not a must, but it's it's it adds to uh, the value of your profile and it increases your um, you know your brand image, your personal brand image. Um, if you've done volunteer experience, which I know many of you have as you are university students. So a lot of the, you know, in universities, there's a lot of uh, extracurricular activities, social clubs that you've joined in, in, in the university. You can add that as your volunteer experience. If you've done some charity work, um, you know, put that, put that down because our data has shown that people that add volunteer experience have six times more profile views than people that don't. Uh, when you add your skills, ask your friends, ask your colleagues, ask your classmates, your professors uh, to endorse your skills. Uh, members who add five or more skills receive 17 times more profile views. So you can see the importance of that. In terms of recommendations, um, as you're all university students, you might not all be able to get um, work experience recommendations. However, if you do an internship, for example, at a company, uh, you can ask um, you can ask your the, the company that you've done an, uh, the internship with to write a recommendation for you. If you haven't done any internships, you can ask your professors in, in university or your teachers to write a recommendation for you. Um, it makes a very, very big difference because, again, recruiters, when they look at uh, individuals' profiles, they, they look at these things. The next point I want to discuss is how to build your professional network. So in the first part, we discussed how to build your profile. Now we're going to talk about how to build your professional network. So... Uh, I'm not sure if many of any of you are familiar with LinkedIn, uh, but LinkedIn works uh, on the basis of degrees of connections. So if you're connected to someone that is connected to someone, so that's a second de degree connection, they'll be able to see your profile. Uh, so let's say I'm connected to Mr. Mahmoud on, on LinkedIn. Uh, I comment on one of his posts. The people that are on his profile that are not connected to me get to see my posts, get to see my profile, and uh, you know we can build connections that way. So uh, building your, your network on LinkedIn is very important, okay? However, uh, don't, don't be the type of person that accepts any uh, request uh, on, on LinkedIn, just like you wouldn't accept 
uh, any requests on Instagram or Snapchat or or Facebook. It's the same on on, on LinkedIn uh, because your privacy. First of all, your privacy matters, and the second thing is as well, uh, the more ir people that the more people you're connected to that are irrelevant to what you're doing, the less recommendation. So what does that mean? When you log into LinkedIn, you have a homepage. The homepage, it shows you what other people are posting. So if, if let's say you, you're, you're a banker or you've studied finance and you're connected to a lot of engineers, when you log into your LinkedIn, you're going to get a lot of engineering news and engineering information on your profile, which of course is not something that you would want. So always make sure you, you're connected to people that are relevant to your industry, um, people, um, your your classmates, uh, you know, people that you went to school with, that's fine. But people that you don't know that are not a shape or form um, relevant to your industry, I would recommend, I would suggest that you don't, do not connect with them. Okay. Um, so there are many ways you can build your network. Is the obvious one, which is search for new connections. You have different filters on LinkedIn, so you can search by location, by keyword, by company. Uh, you can also search by school, so you can put your your university name or your or your high school's name, and you can see um, all the people that are associated with those schools, and you can add them. Um, when you send a connection request to someone. Uh, you have the ability to write them a message. Uh, writing a message or a note to the person increases your likely the likelihood of them accepting your uh, connection request. Okay, so that's it about building your network. The next point is uh, building thought leadership. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with publishing content on LinkedIn and sharing updates platform uh, just like you can share updates on Twitter and on uh, on Facebook you can do the same on LinkedIn but of course at the end of the day this is a professional network so whatever you share has to be professional so there are two types of uh, uh, share, uh, updates that you can that you can share the first is just a normal update where you can you can type text you can share links articles images uh, videos um, YouTube links and, and whatnot, and uh, you can you know attract or generate traffic uh, posts. So, uh, for example, what we see is people that post videos or images uh, attract more um, more traffic, more comments, more likes, more more reshares than people that just post plain text. Um, and you know that that that. And, and enhances your employer brand because you know people get to see what you're talking about people start interacting with your posts sending you um, requests you know for me every time i i post something on linkedin um you know within 24 hours i get many many uh connection requests uh, just to give you an example uh yesterday i reshared majan university's uh you know webinar invite which they shared on linkedin I reshared it uh, with my network, and um, and Majan University also tagged me in their post. Uh, and I can tell you from yesterday until today, the number, the the traffic on my LinkedIn profile has been has increased dramatically, um, and also the number of uh, connection requests that I'm receiving from very interesting and very relevant um, is also uh, you know it's also a, 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 a positive that came out of this the second way of sharing on on linkedin is publishing so publishing is more like more of writing an article or a blog uh, so it's it's similar to writing a blog post um, so if you're a subject matter expert or you have an opinion about something and you want to write a, a long article about it then your best option is to publish um, so sharing a status update is very straightforward, very easy. When you log into LinkedIn, you go to your homepage. Uh, the first thing that will pop up is this box that you see up here. And um, 
you can type, you can attach a video, you can attach an image, and you can publish it. Okay, best practices for sharing an update. Make sure it's authentic. Make sure it's 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 you and it's it's you know it sounds like you. It's relevant to your industry or experience. Post frequently. Like I mentioned earlier, the more you post, the more uh, traction, the more uh, traffic that you know you'll attract to your page. Um, as a best practice, we would say at least a minimum of one post per month. I personally like to do it twice a month or sometimes three times a month, uh, but don't make it too frequent. Sometimes you see people on LinkedIn that post three or four posts every day. Um, that is not recommended because people begin to ignore, you know, when people see your posts occurring all the time on LinkedIn, they, they tend to ignore it. Um, I mentioned earlier, include rich media videos, images. And that way, uh, you know, you can create opportunity for people to engage with you, to collaborate with you. The next one is publishing. So it's the same thing, you go the same box, but instead of writing in that box, you click on write uh, an article. Um, and that will take you to a page where you can publish um, publish a blog post. Um, with a blog post, it's very similar to a post, but keep in mind that you have a headline. Make sure that the headline is attractive, it captures attention. Include a picture in your blog post so that you stand out. Um, think about your audience and, you know, don't make it too short, but don't make it too long. Uh, the article length matters. And then finally, um, sorry, can you go to slide number? Um, 28, please, yes, 28. So when you post on LinkedIn, when you when you post an update or you post a um, a, a blog post, you get you get a lot you get data and analytics on it. It shows you uh, how many people have viewed it, how many people have reshared it, uh, what companies these people work in, what are their job titles, what what countries, what areas do they come from. Uh, so this gives you an idea of your posts. Is it going to the rele relevant audience? Is it not going to the relevant audience? Uh, all of these questions. And it's it's quite easy. You know, when, when you post something at the bottom, you'll see a button that cites. You click on that and it will give you all the information. you need. The next one is uh, how to gain knowledge and insights on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is predominantly... Uh, a platform for professionals to look and look for jobs and search for jobs, but it's not just that. It is at the end of the day, a professional uh, social network, okay? Uh, a lot of people go on LinkedIn, log into LinkedIn every day, uh, not because they're looking for jobs, but because they want to see what's happening in their market. They want to see uh, what's happening in other companies in the competition. They want to read the news, and uh, by the way, LinkedIn right now is the number one digital platform for news in the world. We have overtaken New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and all the other digital uh, newspapers and magazines. We have overtaken all of them. Uh, it, is the, it is the number one source for news. Okay. Uh, we have also, uh, in the past year, um, LinkedIn has hired uh, journalists from BBC, from CNN, from NBC, uh, from Sky News, uh, that write and publish articles in all languages. So in, in, in the Middle East, we have two. We have one that is X Sky News and the other one is from uh, NBC. They publish news in English and in Arabic every day. And uh, you, can, you can see it on the right-hand side of your homepage when you log into LinkedIn. Um, so yes, it's LinkedIn is not just a uh, platform for looking for jobs. How do you um, gain knowledge and insights? So it depends on the companies that you follow. So if you follow companies such as Oman LNG, for example, or you follow companies such as IBM, Microsoft, um, you will get the latest news about these, these companies. 
uh, on your on your newsfeed. Um, so as as students, you're I don't know what you're studying, but let's say for example you're an engineer and you want to get into the technology sector. So start, so it would be a great idea to follow Microsoft's page, Oracle, SAP's page, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, the next one is also follow influencers. So we have a lot of important people on LinkedIn. For example, we have Bill Gates. We have uh, uh, Barack Obama. We, Joe Biden also has a uh, LinkedIn page. But also in the region, we have a lot of ministers uh, and presidents that are on LinkedIn. Um, a lot of subject matter experts with whatever field you could think of are on LinkedIn. Uh, of course, you cannot connect with them directly, but you can follow them. Uh, you, they have a follow their, their pages, you follow it, and you can get from these uh, top influencers. Okay. Um, regarding news on your on your homepage, uh, you know I mentioned earlier that it's important to follow or co connect with the right people and follow the right pages so that you get the right news on your newsfeed. However, uh, you're always going to have um, you're always going to have things coming up on your LinkedIn homepage that are not relevant. What you can do is you can click on um, the three buttons. There's on any on every post. There's three buttons on the top right. You click on that and you click on hide post. Um, and in the future, we have an artificial intelligence engine. This will learn your habits over time and it will understand the things that you like and the things that you don't like. And it will um, post things on your feed depending on uh, your depending on that. OK, so that's it for my part. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the workshop. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, to Mr. Mr. Mehsan. Thank you, Mr. Mahmoud. Um, this session was uh, incredible, actually. I'm waiting the questions from the audience. Once I receive the questions, uh, I'm going to ask the questions and you'll be able to answer it. Sure. So while we're waiting for the questions, again, maybe I would like to emphasize on the importance of LinkedIn. And, and um, uh, Mr. Abdel Mahsen mentioned about networking. And through networking, for example, even while working, for, while working, if you are working on a project, it's very easy to network with people and ask them for help, ask them for information. So indeed, to be honest, um, uh, LinkedIn helped me a lot in a number of projects. You know, uh, just to through that network, for example, asking people for help, even asking to come and see people uh, physically in person and sit with them to learn something new. So that's that's really help, and and you can do it not only when you go outside Oman, for example, if you already have a network of a trusted person, you already been trusting this person. Even you can meet him or her in in their home country. Yes. Uh, actually, I have one question, uh, Mr. Uh, Mehsan. Uh, yes. uh, did you, uh, is there any offers that accept um, uh, the, you know, the participator or those people who are, have a profile in the LinkedIn? Did they get this job or there is a big competition between them? And in base, what they accept for this offer, based on what? Uh, so let, let me see if I understood your question correctly. Uh, so you're, you're you're asking about you know people that candidates that on on LinkedIn for job, and then they subsequently um, get offered a job offer, and then they take it. Is, is that is that your question? Yeah. That's what you're referring to. Yes. Yes. So, um, yeah, what, what, what normally happens with uh, candidates on, on LinkedIn, you've got two types of candidates. 
you've got the active candidates and the passive candidates. So active candidates are people that go and search for jobs and they, they apply and they reach out to the recruiters within these companies and say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Uh, can you consider me? Um, so these active candidates, what normally happens is options to choose from. And uh, it's, it's a numbers game. So out of, let's say, 20 jobs that they apply for, they get uh, five interviews. From the five interviews, maybe they get two job offers. And um, and then they can, based on that, they can, you know, they can they can make a decision. Then you have the second type of candidate. These are the passive candidates. These are candidates that are happy in their jobs, their job. But one day, a recruiter uh, from Mr. Mahmoud's team reaches out to them directly on LinkedIn and says, "Hey, we've seen your experience. We've seen your profile. We're interested. Come in for an interview." Um, the person comes in. He or she does well in, in the interview, and then they get made um, an offer. Uh, normally, passive passive candidates get better offers than active candidates. Uh, the reason why that is is, and I think uh, Mr. Mahmoud can support me on this, is because they're not looking for a job. Okay, they're not desperate to move, and. Uh, it's the, it's the employer that's actually chasing them and wanting them to join. And normally, uh, passive candidates are uh, more demanding and they get, normally on average, they get better offers than active uh, candidates. Is that correct, Mr. Mahmoud? Yeah, I do, I do support you here, uh, Mr. Mohsin. So. In the, in the last year uh, recruitment within Oman LNG, 80% of those we've recruited are passive candidates. Yeah. And especially for, for specialized, when I'm talking about specialized uh, skill set or specialized jobs, and normally they are passive candidates. So here, here we are. This is why LinkedIn for employers is really helpful. You know, and this is why uh, everyone needs to have that profile within. It's not only those who apply, but also we look for, because you see lots of people applying, but to be honest, they are not meeting the requirement, the minimum yes. requirement. So we also do ourselves like headhunting, I would say. We will go and, and search for people who did not apply for those passive candidates and ask them, we do have something, please apply. And you are right, they are more demanding because they know that they're worth. They already know that they are really worth this is why they, they've been contacted. Yes, correct. Okay, there is one of questions actually from Marwa Salem Al Maqimi. She uh, asked that when we should create a LinkedIn account. This is a really good question. Thank you, uh, thank you, Marwa. I, you know, I should have uh, I should have discussed this in my presentation. I'm happy uh, you brought it up. So. When should we create a LinkedIn profile? Um, as a student, we would recommend creating a, your profile six months before graduation. Okay, um, because uh, you know I, I know that a lot of students, especially in in in, in Oman and in, in the Gulf, even before they graduate, they already have some work experience doing internships in summer and in the holidays. Um, so it's important to start early. You create your LinkedIn profile early. Um, you know, the, the, the university year or the school year normally ends in June, okay? And companies that look for interns, they, they start looking for interns in August, September, uh, for them to start in, in, in October. So uh, as, a, as a general rule of thumb, I would say six months before graduation. Okay, that's a great. Actually, there is no questions till now. Only Maru has asked these questions. So if Ibtissam wants to ask some questions, tell the audience write their question. Okay, hello everyone. Sam Zahabi here from Majan University College. My question for Mr. Mahmoud. Mr. Mahmoud, tell us how our students can apply for a training or internship program in LNG. 
So what we did in the past for training and internship, we we go to LinkedIn, to be honest. Uh, we did advertise through LinkedIn and also into the universities and colleges uh, to ask them also to share profiles. So to share those, uh, the, the, the name, the name of candidates who they are, um, who can be uh, selected for internship. Um, so, so, but the, one of the main sources, again, LinkedIn, uh, going back to Marwa's question, Suna Marwa's and, and, and her brothers and sisters, I would say, uh, be it those who are still studying or those job seekers, the sooner they have that profile, the better, because, and the sooner they follow the organization that they want to work for, the better, because following the organization, as uh, Mr. Mohsin mentioned, you'll be able to get updates. You know, if you follow that organization, what updates, what jobs that, they'll be able to get them promptly. So, so the sooner they create that profile, the better for them, uh, for internship and for training. Great, clear. I have another Great. question. Is there any tool? Is is there any other tool than than LinkedIn for recruitment purpose? So, so normally we do have our own system within Oman LNG. So people. Uh, and, and uh, look for jobs and apply to our system. We have our system where even people can put their, their profiles from now, attach their CVs and other things. But I would, I would tell you, um, LinkedIn will be even much easier because there will be more visibility. You know, it will be also quick to apply compared even to our system to be, to be frank. So, okay. so, so, so LinkedIn is, so we do have our own, uh, LinkedIn page also, you can see us in our LinkedIn page. We have also in the in, in Oman, in Oman, there is also PetroJob. PetroJob, yeah. Yeah, PetroJob is a site where all Oman's uh, oil and gas operators uh, yeah. together, they post their jobs there. So through PetroJob also, people can go and apply. But if you talk about job seekers, if you talk about job seekers, uh, it's mainly through the Ministry of Labor. So we, we advertise through them for jobs. So for job seekers, through the Ministry of Labor, we put our requirement. With their Ministry of Labor, they will advertise for those positions. And then uh, those, they will send us even the shortlist because we will tell them the criteria, what we want, what exactly we want. So everyone will apply to the Ministry. So, so everyone will apply to Ministry of Labor. Ministry of Labor will send us the, the short list and then we'll start, of course, the, the assessment part until the selection. Yeah, clear. Thank you, yeah. Uh Actually, there is a question from Mariam Zujari. says that, how often should I update my profile? I believe that question uh, goes to the Mr. Mehsan regarding the LinkedIn. Yes. Okay, uh, so the the main difference between LinkedIn and you know other job websites is that people on LinkedIn update their profiles more frequently. Okay, uh, there are many uh, job sites. Um, you know, for example, you have Bait.com, GolfPlanet.com, um, where people go, they upload their CVs, and um, when they're looking for a job. And then they just leave the CV there and they don't update it. Whereas with LinkedIn, uh, people, you know, the first thing they do when they join a job on their first day or within the first week is they update their LinkedIn profile. Um, so I would say how often you should update it. It depends on your movement from job to job. So I would say when you move to a new job, when you start within the first day of starting a new job or an internship, um, you update your profile. If you're currently a student, okay, you can put on your uh, LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn allows you to say that you are studying and you are expected to finish your studies in, let's say, 2021. Uh, so you can do that. And then once you graduate, update your LinkedIn profile to say you graduated. Uh, but also on LinkedIn, you also have skills, you know. So if you pick up a new skill, through a course that you did at university or a course you did online or a, or any type of learning activity you've done and you've picked up a skill, I would say immediately update your LinkedIn profile with that new skill. 
Um, so yeah, the the frequency of how often you update your profile it depends on um, you know the frequency of how you know how how recently you've obtained new skills or how recently you've you've moved jobs and so on and so forth. Clear. So uh, there is also another question from Noura Suleimani. She asked that, uh, is it recommended to contact with the HR and ask them for an opportunity, as some of people feel this annoying them? Uh, yeah, regarding, so, regarding the job. Yeah, yeah. So if I may take this uh, this this uh, question. So it, it used to be again. Uh, people contacting HR for jobs, but now, so uh, I would say it's more of pushing, people pushing for jobs. Now we are pulling, what we are doing now, you know, we we post those jobs uh, through LinkedIn and others, and we expect people to apply. So everything, there isn't, uh, you'll see some people also coming in with their paper CVs, even until today, believe it or not, where we say, no, we do have our own system, you can apply, you can put that CV in our system, or you can wait until the jobs are, are uh, there's a vacancy. And the best thing, as I've said, if you are in LinkedIn, for example, and you are following, let's say, for example, Umar al you will be able to get immediate update. And if you if you have what it takes, yani the skills required uh, and the qualifications, the experience, you can apply there and then. Uh, I mean, yes, we will be more than happy to entertain our brothers and sisters when they call us, and we do so, to be frank. However, in my advice to everyone is not not to, to wait and call people. You go and search for it. Nowadays, you know, as I've said, during my time when I graduated 2001, I was waiting for things. I had to call people, you know. But now everything is available. There is more uh, information available, be it through uh, you know, a page, through LinkedIn, through PetroJob, through even the Ministry of Labor site. Uh, you advertise them for, especially for uh, for uh, job seekers. Yeah. Mr. Abdel Marsik, what did you add? Yeah, I just want to add something here uh, regarding the same question. Uh, you know, keep in mind that, you know, HR professionals or talent acquisition professionals, they, at any given point of time, they're working on multiple roles, okay? They're extremely, extremely busy people. And for every role, they've got, you know, uh, multiple candidates uh, reaching out to them and um, contacting them and so on and so forth. Um, so it's it's not a matter of them getting annoyed. It's a matter of them being just overwhelmed with the amount of work that they have. So what I would suggest, um, you know, for people like job seekers to do, and this is something I've done in the past, and I've and it's 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 worked for me. I've been successful with it. If you see a job that you like and you believe you're a, you're a perfect fit, first thing you do is you apply for that job. Okay. You apply for it, whether it's on LinkedIn or whether it's on the company's website, uh, wherever it is, you apply for the job first. Then you reach out to the recruiter that is working on that job. So if you if you see if you see the job on LinkedIn, you will immediately know who the recruiter is. You'll see that it's uh, Mr. Uh, X who or Mrs. X that's working on this, and you can reach out to them directly by sending them a message on LinkedIn and saying, um, hi, um, you know, I've, 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 I've already applied for this job, but I would like you to consider my profile because I believe I'm a fit for so and so and so reasons, okay? Um, rather than just saying, hey, here's my CV, I want a job. You know, that's, that's the wrong way of doing it. You apply first, then you contact the person and tell them you've applied and explain to them why you believe that you're a fit. And, uh, you know, the art, the art and all of this is that message you sent to the person. Uh, you, you know, you have to write a really good message, um, very convincing message, uh, you know, if you, to explain to that person why you believe you're a good fit for, for the job. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's the approach that I would, I would recommend. And it's, it, it is successful. It's been successful for me. It's been successful for a lot of other people.
Thank you, uh, Mr. Mahmoud and Mr. Mehsan. Actually, there is um, three more questions uh, from Hamid uh, Mansour. His question is, is there any other alternative to LinkedIn we can headhunt to? Okay, um, I can I can take that question. So um, if you look at if you look at headhunting in the past, the traditional way of, of headhunting before before LinkedIn, the way people headhunted was through through their own contacts. So if I was a recruiter and I'm looking for a very specific type of candidate, I would reach out to someone that I know that someone might know someone and, and so on and so forth. And it was it was a network, you know, it, like I mentioned earlier, you know, the first degree, second degree, third degree uh, network that you have on LinkedIn. Um, people people used to do that manually in the past. And that's how they would headhunt today. Headhunting is mostly done on LinkedIn, even recruitment agencies. OK, which companies pay a lot of money for. OK, they headhunt through LinkedIn. Um, so is there an alternative? Yes. You're, the, the short answer is yes, there is an alternative. But it's not used as much as before. The alternative is the traditional way of doing it. Um, most headhunting today is done on LinkedIn. OK, that was clear. Uh, there is a question from Mizna uh, Mohammed Al Barwani. Uh, she's she asked that what is the difference between LinkedIn and GitHub, and which one of them is better to use? Okay, so uh, there's there's a there's a there's a big difference. Get GitHub is a job board. Okay, um, it's it's a job board just like Golf Talent and Bait and and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, it's you know with with these with these with these websites, people upload their CVs when they're looking for a job, and when they find a job, don't go back to it. They don't update it with their latest skills and their latest uh, experience. Um, LinkedIn, on the other hand, is a social media site. You know, it's it's purely social. Um, you have a profile just like you have a profile on Instagram and, and, and Facebook. You share content, you share news. Um, you know, uh, for example, last year I was with, I was with Mr. Mahmoud uh, in, in, in Sur. We, uh, we did a presentation for, I think, 100 people. Um, we took pictures and we posted that on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of people in the industry got to see that. They got to see that. Um, oh, Arman and NG bought LinkedIn Learning. And I can tell you two months after that, half of the oil and gas companies in Oman reached out to us wanting LinkedIn, uh, you know, LinkedIn Learning because Arman and NG was first. Um, so, so that is the main difference. It's, it is, it is, it's a social network. It's a professional social network. Whereas GitHub is a, um, uh, job site. Okay. Uh, there is uh, one more question from Noura Al Arami. Uh, she says that uh, I mean she asked that what are the steps to get more views in our LinkedIn profile? Okay. It's it's uh, it's very easy. Uh, post frequently. Okay. When you post, make sure your posts are rich with with media. Uh, with the, the right hashtags, with the videos, uh, post once or twice a month. Um, also, um, you know, connect to people that have a lot of connections that are also very active on LinkedIn. Uh, why is that? Because when you're connected to those people and they comment on your posts or they like their posts or your, your posts, their connections get to see that. Their connections get to see that um, so and so has commented on this post, and then they can view your profile, and you know th that's where you can get more profile views. But also keep in keep in mind that it's not just about quantity; it's about quality. Uh, so this is not Instagram, where the more followers you have, 
you know, the, the bigger your, your, your brand. It doesn't work that way. Um, you know, I can have a hundred followers that are all, um, you know, within my industry and uh, Mahmoud could have 1000 followers that are from different industries. My, uh, my brand, my personal brand on LinkedIn would still be stronger than his because even though I have less followers. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my advice. Uh, another question is from Noor Suleimani. Uh, could you please explain the differences between the first and the second connection? Yeah, okay. So the first degree connection is someone you are directly connected to. So that means that that person sent you a request and you accepted it, or you sent that person a request and he and she, he or she accepted it. Okay, so that is a first degree connection. Um, second degree connection is the connections of your connections. So if you're connected to me, okay, and I'm connected to Mahmoud, but you're not, you're not connected to Mahmoud, Mahmoud is your second degree connection because you are connected to me. Um, so that is the second degree connection. Thank you, Mr. Mehsan. I believe that Tissam, she would be able to ask one more question. Uh, sure, Khadija. Yes, uh, we have heard uh, about LinkedIn in learning. Could you please let us to know about uh, how big organizations as Oman LNG using it? Okay, yes. So, um, first of all, with LinkedIn learning, um, Keep in mind that organizations are using it, but also individuals are, are using it. So mm -hmm. um, organizations can purchase it for their employees. But if, if your organization doesn't have LinkedIn Learning, you can pay for it out of your own pocket. Okay, mm -hmm. and especially now during the uh, COVID-19 lockdown, we have seen that so many people in this region and worldwide um, subscribed for LinkedIn Learning out of their own pockets. Mm -hmm. uh, to, answer your to answer your question, how does it help uh, organizations? So it's it's an e-learning platform where uh, where people can take courses at their own pace, but mm -hmm. or organizations also have their own competency frameworks, their own set of skills that they require from um, from their employees. So what we can do is we can map courses uh, according to the company's competency framework. So let's say uh, they're looking for soft skills in time management, for example, okay? So we can map all the courses that are related to time management to that competency and push it to all the employees in something we call a learning path. So, that's how it works for organizations. Of course, then, or, then the organization has full access to see all the data and insights. They can see who's viewed what, who's, who's, who's investing in their learning, who's completed what, um, learning have they, have they done, and then you know, they, can, they can monitor it in a very easy and user-friendly way. So that covers organizations. Individuals, on the other hand, um, you know, on LinkedIn, again, we use artificial intelligence uh, when it comes to individuals applying for jobs. So let's say I went and I saw a job on, on, I viewed a job on LinkedIn that I liked. LinkedIn will tell you how much of a match you are to this job. So for example, if I'm not a, a match, it would say I only match 40% of what they're looking for. However, if I want to match all the requirements, all the skills uh, for this job. Here are the learning courses that you need to take on LinkedIn Learning so that you fill that learning gap, uh, or sorry, fill that skills gap uh, that is required for. Okay, Ms. Abdul Mahsin, that was a uh, great answering. You can hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. Uh, okay. Uh, I believe that there's no more questions even from my side. 
Thank you, Mr. Abdul Mahsan. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Mahsan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mahmoud Al Hadidi, for this incredible session. It was uh, too much interesting, and I, I'm, I believe the audience that, uh, you know, take these sort of from this session. Uh, thank you for your timing, and uh, I'm just gonna remind the audience that there is a registration link. Could you please link on it and just fill the uh, data? And for those who want to see the session later on, uh, it will be edited and uploaded in our channel in YouTube. So thank you so much for your time and thank you audience for your time also. Inshallah, we will meet in another webinar to you guys. Ibtissam, you wanna say something before we leave the webinar? Yes, yeah, sure. I would like to thank both of you, Mr. Mohsen and Mr. Mahmoud for your time and sharing uh, sharing this knowledge and thank you also for Khadija. Thank you. You're most welcome. So thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a nice evening. You too. Take care. Thank you. You, you too. Thank you.